The St. Louis Cardinals have made their first signing of the offseason, and it is a starting pitcher. Steven Matz is a Cardinal, according to reports, four years, $44 million, a deal that could be worth up to $48 million. It's a solid move, in my opinion. Is it a flashy move like a Marcus Stroman or a Max Scherzer? No, and I grant you that. Well, I'm talking about the positives and negatives on today's show about Steven Matz because there are plenty of positives and plenty of upside with Steven Matz. So talking about all that and more on today's episode of Locked on Cardinals. You are Locked on Cardinals, your daily St. Louis Cardinals podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Cardinals podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. I am Lucas Smith. It is Wednesday, November the 24th, and the Cardinals struck a deal with Stephen Matz late last night, according to Jeff Passan and Ken Rosenthal and many others, uh, confirming the reports as well. Cardinals signed Stephen Matz to a four-year, $44 million contract. I was I just finished up a recording with Jeff Carr of Locked On Reds, because that's what we were supposed to talk about today. I literally finished recording press. I sent him the video and audio. I got on my phone, and I saw that Steven Matz has been signed to the Cardinals. But we had to redo everything for today, so we're recording this. Um, so the, the conversation about Scott Rowland that Jeff Carr and I had will drop tomorrow, and part tomorrow, part Friday. I mean, I'm sure you guys will be excited to hear about that at a later date. Let's continue to talk about Steven Matz. Left-handed pitcher, former Met, spent some time with Toronto last season, and had a very solid 2021. And while I understand, I mentioned this in the YouTube Open, and I talked about this in the Locked On Now breaking news video that was posted on the Twitter at LO underscore Cardinals. That's also the Instagram it was posted on, as well as the YouTube channel. It's not the flashiest of moves, and I, I like I said, I, I, I know that, but I think that there are some positives, and I don't want to be super quick to judge. And at the end of the day, this deal will not be able to be completely judged until years down the road as to see what Stephen Matz is able to accomplish in a Cardinal uniform. We'll talk about the positives and negatives today, but I want to start first and foremost that like even when, when, I, when I talk about the positives, even when I acknowledge the fact that this move has some positive outcomes to it and I like the move, this cannot be, and I repeat, this cannot be the only move that John Moselak and the Cardinals make this offseason. If it is the only move the Cardinals make, then you start to wonder, ooh, I'm not really so sure that was the move to make. Because if the Cardinals need to make one move, then you probably go for a Max Scherzer, Marcus Stroman type pitcher. But if you can pair or even combine other pitchers around Steven Matz, so that way you know he's more of a three or four, which he's going to slot in most likely at a three or four slot in the starting rotation, then that makes this move a lot more positive and a lot easier to receive, in my opinion. It, and then and again, this, this does not take the Cardinals 100% out of the Max Scherzer sweepstakes or the Marcus Stroman sweepstakes. This deal is $11 million average annual value. The exact breakdown of the contract has not been released yet. Uh, the, the deal is still pending a physical. Thanksgiving's tomorrow, so likely won't hear anything until Black Friday. But still, $11 million annual, give or take, in this first year, will still give the Cardinals plenty of room to play with for the 2022 budget. Now, a lockout is, in, is, is most likely coming. The, the ba- Major League Baseball moved up the tender deadline um, a, a little bit because of that. But I, I think that the Cardinals are not done. And that, to me, is what makes this move a positive one. The Cardinals are not done and can make this a more successful offseason with a bullpen signing, with an impact bat, with another starting pitching signing. Any combination of those, all those, you know, just to be clear, to make those good signings. I'm not saying sign an impact bat, somebody that no one's ever heard of. And I'm not even saying that it needs to be Trevor Story either. It, it, it's both and or, right? But th- th- this pitching, th- this signing that the Cardinals just made of Steven Matz cannot, I repeat, cannot be the only signing that the Cardinals make. I don't think it is. I, I, I do think that the Cardinals are, are in for a busy offseason, but I just want to, before I get into the positives, the positives, I wanted to acknowledge that, the saying that, hey, I understand that this cannot be the only move, and the Cardinals need to continue to be aggressive. So let, let, let's look at Stephen Matz by the numbers. Career, 
you know, it, it's been an okay career for Steven Matz, a 4-2-4 ERA, 45 wins, 48 losses, 141 career games. That's over 136 starts, 730 and a third innings pitched, a fielding independent pitching mark of 4.34, and a whip of 1.3. So not super exciting, but when you look at his 2021, you get a little bit more excited. 151 and two-thirds of an innings pitched, a 3.82 ERA. He won 14 baseball games, 152 in the third innings, 29 starts, 144 strikeouts, ERA plus of 115. That is above average. A 3.79 fielding independent pitching and a 1.334 whip. So solid numbers overall. This was after a, a strong first two seasons in New York. Dealt with some injuries in 2017. Had a so-so 2018 Numbers weren't fantastic. And then 2019 struggled. 2020 uh, only played in 30 innings, uh, nine games, six starts at an ERA north of nine and a half. And then he went to Toronto and had very good success. So the upside is that this is somebody who's been there. He's, he's 30 years old, so he's still on the younger side, but he's a veteran. He's been there, done that. He's worked through adversity and at least for one season has learned how to overcome that adversity. And overall in his career as well, He's been healthy. Look at his starts by season. He made six starts in his first year in 2015, was phenomenal in those six starts. 2016, his rookie campaign made 22 starts. That's solid. As I mentioned, 2017, dealt with some injuries, 13 starts. But over the last three seasons, he has made 29 or more starts, 30 in 2018, 30 in 2019, and 29 in 2021. So while the health could be looked at as a little bit of a concern, I look at it as a positive because he's been able to take the ball every fifth day for the most part over the last three full seasons. Steven Matz is not, I'm not trying to sell Steven Matz as this wonderful ace type arm. If he's got a mid threes ERA, wins 10 to 12 baseball games, has has an ERA plus around 100. This is a solid signing. He has a chance to be really good. And the reason that I think that he has a chance to be really good that a lot of people have been pointing out he, he's going to have a very good defense behind him that is going to help him out a ton because he is a ground ball pitcher. He always has been. Uh, his, his ground ball percentage in 2021, according to uh, fan graphs, was 45.5%. And just for, um, for, for some context here, that 45.5% would be right around the likes of of a Zach Grinke, a Walker Bueller, Hunjin Ryu, Patrick Corbin. Adam Wainwright had a 47.5 percentage ground ball, a uh, ground ball percentage, excuse me. Anthony Discalfani, who had a very good 2021. Kyle Hendricks, Garrett Cole, Cy Young Award finalist. Frankie Montas of Oakland, and just one more name that you guys might be more familiar with, Tyler Malley of Cincinnati. All those guys are solid to ace level pitchers, solid like a Tyler Malley, ace level like Walker Bueller and Adam Wainwright. Steven Matz has the opportunity to continue his bounce back success that he had in 2021 because he was in a very, very, he's going to be rather in a very, very good situation for the St. Louis Cardinals with the defense behind him. With that ground ball rate, maybe a couple of ground balls that were base hits in Toronto and New York end up being out because they were hit in the vicinity of Nolan Arenado or Paul Goldschmidt or Tommy Edman or whoever the shortstop ends up being. But whoever the shortstop does end up being, I don't see them being such a, a weight on this defense that all of a sudden this defense becomes terrible. <laughs> They're going to get a good shortstop. They're going to have a good shortstop in 2021, at least a good fielding one. So Steven Matz has, th- th- there's upside to this Steven Matz deal. There really, really is. I believe that. Again, I'm not trying to sell you Steven Matz as this top of the line going to win 20. <coughs> <coughs> excuse me, as this top of the line going to win 20 games type of pitcher. But I think he has a chance to improve because you also look at it. He was in the best division in baseball last season in the AL East. And I know not all of his starts came against AL East foes, but still a 3.82 making 29 starts in the AL East. That's a pretty solid mark. And not to say that the NL Central is a bad division by any stretch of the imagination, but I don't think that they are the National League Central. The Steven Match deal is one that I think is is evident of the patience that John Mozeliak was preaching to start this offseason. Moves are coming, but it needs it, you, we, we need to be patient. We were patient for a little bit, and we got and the Cardinals got Stephen Matz. I, I'm I'm I think this is a really solid addition. He's got some high upside. The risk is is pretty low. 
again, when I'll get to the negatives and the risks coming up here in segment number two, but Steven Matz is a fit. He fulfills two needs. Number one, a starting pitcher, because the Cardinals have been, since day one, going for a starting pitcher. Number two, a left-handed starting pitcher specifically, because the other four starters in the rotation, Flaherty, Wainwright, Michaelis, and Hudson, you know what those four have in common? They all throw from the right side. I think I might be on the left side of your screen if you're watching on YouTube, but this is my right hand going up. It's it's good for a rotation to have a little bit of a different look when you have a left-handed starting pitcher because you don't want to get the other hitters in a routine in a three-game series, being able to throw them off. And again, Steven Match is going to benefit from the defense that the Cardinals are going to provide him. I just think there's a ton of upside in this deal. It, it, he, he just needs to be a three-starter because that's what he is. He just needs to be who he is. He if he has a down year, so be it. But with, with with the money that they gave him, the Cardinals have room to play. I'm going to leave the positives at that because the Cardinals do have a ton of room to play, and I think that they will be playing this season, uh, that this offseason with some cash, and that they will be able to they'll be able to make some deals. I I I would be hard. It would be hard to convince me that this is the only deal the Cardinals are making this offseason. Could it be the first one for a while? Yeah, I understand that. But boy, oh boy, the, the, the Cardinals aren't done. Cardinals are not done. So with every move, there, there's a good side and a bad side. Okay, so we're, we talked about the good side, good ground ball rate, coming off a really solid year, uh, fulfills a couple needs, chance to be really good with that ground ball rate. Positives. He's a good starting pitcher. With every move, there are positives and negatives. So we're going to get into some negatives first. But before we get to the negatives, I got one more positive thing to talk about, and that is Built Bar. Thanksgiving is tomorrow. You're going to get all the good food and treats tomorrow. I'm sure you're going to be stuffing yourselves full. But maybe you want a yummy dessert that isn't so full of calories and sugar. That's why it's perfect for a Built Bar. Built Bar is the new holiday dessert. You can feast on something delicious and feel good about it this Thanksgiving. One slice of pie has upwards of 300 calories, and that's on the low end. Most Built Bars are only 130 calories and only 4 grams of sugar with plenty of protein. Replace that coconut cream pie with your coconut Built Bar. Low calorie, low carb, low fat, high protein. Lots of good flavors to replace any pie, and all these Built Bars are covered 100% in chocolate. Built is also a great option for just when you're hungry, and if Thanksgiving isn't coming soon enough, maybe you want to try and get some Built Bars to your house as quickly as possible. Go for a Built Bar too right now. Share some of your family gatherings, and there are new surprises all month at Built.com, including limited time flavor, so check the site often, as well as Built Bar Black Friday, which is coming up this Friday. Nothing else is like it, so mark your calendar. Black Friday will be a huge event with all sorts of surprises. But if you can't wait till Black Friday, order now at Built.com by using the promo code LOCK15. That is L-O-C-K-E-D-1-5 to get 15% off your order. Again, that is LOCK15 for 15% off at Built.com. I, I think when I, when I think of the negatives of this deal or the the the, the question marks, I, I should say, surrounding this deal, what, what jumps out at me initially, the, the knee-jerk reaction, this is no disrespect to Stephen Matz, is the, the the slight disappointment a lot of Cardinal fans are feeling right now. Because for the last two, three days, Cardinal Twitter has been exploding with Marcus Stroman tweets, and Marcus Stroman and Cardinals got uh, trending on Twitter the other day, and again, it's Twitter, things go trending all the time. But I, I, I do sense a little bit of a disappointment from Cardinal Nation, and there are a lot of people that are plenty happy with this deal. Me, a couple of friends of mine that I've been texting over the last 12 hours or so, um, Plenty of people commenting on YouTube channel that they're happy with. Plenty of people commenting on Instagram that they're happy with it as well. So don't get me wrong. There are happy people about this deal. But I do sense a little bit of, of disappointment. But I would urge you, you know, I'm not trying to be just turn every negative into a positive here because there are some question marks about this deal. But I would urge you, if you're feeling down about this deal, to be patient. And you could say you've heard that before and yada, yada, yada. And I understand that. But I think that the Cardinals have an opportunity to win in 2022 I think that they've shown that they want to by re-signing Wainwright Molina, getting TJ McFarlane to come back, who was very successful in 2021, signing a guy like Steven Matz, who has plenty of upside. But just be patient. I understand the disappointment because Marcus Stroman and Steven Matz, if I had to pick one, Marcus Stroman is a pretty tough guy to beat when you're looking at those two gentlemen. But again, Steven Matz is going to be solid. But there are, there are concerns with this deal because when you look past 2021, you know, past referring to the past tense, 
His, his last three seasons before that were not fantastic. You can even go back to 2017, because from 2017 to 2020, yeah, again, he dealt with injury in 17 and, and 20, only made six starts, nine games overall in the COVID shortened season. But in that four season stretch, um, not, not quite, or four year stretch, not quite four full seasons, only made 20 starts, 21 games overall, had an ERA of 4.83. Uh, 411 innings pitched, ERA plus of 82, which is below average, as I mentioned, a whip of 1.36, walked three batters per nine instead of his usual uh, 2.6 per nine, which is, it's a big difference when when, when you really get get down into it. So 2017 to 2020 were not kind to Steven Matz. So the the question does, does arise that is, are the Cardinals signing him just because of 2021? And is, is that a wrong move? Is that the wrong move? Because you have to wonder, Stephen Matz, you know, wh- which is the real Stephen Matz is basically what I'm getting down to. And if you want to look at it from a negative perspective and want to bring up some concerns, that's a concern. Stephen Matz has not had a good seri- a good season overall outside of 2021, all the way since 2016. That was a long time ago. In, in, in baseball terms especially, in 2020, he was just dreadful. So our concerns as to the, the consistency of Steven Matz in terms of production on the field. But again, he, he's been healthy, and but but that, that is a concern. I'm not going to try and spin that because that is a concern. When you're looking at the contract, the average annual value of, of $11 million, again, is a huge positive. But the four years is a, is a tad long. Uh, again, this, this most recent season was his age 30 season uh, with Toronto. He'll turn 31 on May 29th of next season. Uh, So he'll still be 30 on opening day, assuming opening day is still when opening day is scheduled to be. Lockout talk, that's the conversation for a different day. Uh, So a little bit up there in age, four years for a guy like Steven Matz at this age might be a little long. So I understand the concern there. Uh, But the the, the four years will work out for the Cardinals' favor if Matz does well, obviously. You also have to look at with the four years, the Cardinals have a lot of starting rotation options. You know, they, they, they've got five locked up right now. You've also got Alex Reyes. Jordan Hicks has talked about wanting to start. You're probably going to see Matthew Liebertor gather some some Isaac Thompson's pitch pretty well at AAA level. So you wonder, is, is this move backing up the rotation? Is this move forcing these guys, It will this move rather, force these guys to be in the minors longer than the Cardinals want them to? And that, that's a valid point. That, that is a valid question because you've got Matthew Libertor, Zach Thompson, as I mentioned. Johan Oviedo is, is trending in the right direction to start as well. Uh, Pancheco, who is the uh, AFL All-Star that I talked about on yes, yesterday's show, is is coming as with Jake Walsh. You, you've got guys that are in the wings. Palante, a top prospect as well. You've got guys waiting in the wings. So I think that the – excuse me, my microphone – uh, fell down a little bit there. I think that the, the counterpoint to that would be is that the oh, – my stand fell. So, sorry, I'll have to hold it like this for the rest of the show. Uh, should be okay. But the um, the counterpoint to that would be you're going to have Mike Liss leave. You're going to have Wainwright leave um, in the next two two years. But the, the length of the contract was a little long. I wasn't super upset and uh, am not super upset when I when I saw the um, – saw the signing, the, 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 the length raised an eyebrow, if you will, for me. But I think that four years is is it's, it's gonna it's gonna set the market because if Stephen Matz is getting paid eleven million dollars a year, I think that that just increased the price for Marcus Stroman and Max Scherzer. So that probably brings the Cardinals out of that sweepstake as well. But again, w- with these concerns that, that I talked about, that I acknowledge are there, which which starting pitcher are you gonna get? Is the contract too long? Is it backing up? Um, it, does it take the Cardinals out of the sweepstakes? Because if again, as I talked about in the beginning. I don't think the Cardinals are done, but if the Cardinals are forced to be done because of this deal, let's say, you know, another player that the Cardinals want, let's just say for, for conversation piece, let's say a Max Scherzer wants five extra million dollars, which he's probably owed, but the Cardinals can't give it to him because they just paid Stephen Matz $11 million. Then this would be a bad move. But again, that's, that, that's going to be talked about later that that's hindsight. You can't always plan for that. But if this move, causes the Cardinals to be out on any of the other free agents starting your pitchers or any of the other free agents that they want to sign, then this move becomes questionable and arguably becomes a negative. Because you got to think of, would you rather have Marcus Stroman and Trevor Story or just Steven Matz? 
That's the way to look at it. And the answer should be you want Marcus Stroman and Trevor Story. <laughs> um, but at the end of the day, this move, we, we can talk about it all day long. We're going to talk about it over the next coming days and weeks. Looking to have Ryan Finkelstein of Locked On Mets on the show uh, early next week to talk about Stephen Mads. We can talk about it all day long. This move will not be able to adequately be judged until the end of the contract, until the end of his days as a Cardinal. And that just is what it is. So we'll keep talking. We'll keep breaking it down. I think this is an overall solid move. I really do. Uh, I, I think that he's got some upside, fulfills a couple of needs. I, I tend to agree more with the, with the positives that I mentioned versus the negatives. So let me know what you think. Comment on the YouTube channel. A lot of you did on the Locked On Now Breaking News video, and I love that, that, that interaction. Keep it up. Um, I'll share some of your responses that you responded to on the Instagram story, LO underscore Cardinals. Uh, you can also follow me on Twitter at LJ Fastball as well. Uh, to have any sort of conversation there, DM, reply to a tweet, whatever. Uh, so we'll do that in second number three as well. as kind of go over Stephen Matz's pitch mix in case you guys are unfamiliar. Uh, but before we do that, I want to tell you about Bet Online. Bet Online, it's Thanksgiving. And you know what that means? Football. Football, Bet Online, Thanksgiving. It's glorious. Nothing goes better with football than turkey and betting. And Bet Online is going to have you covered for all the holiday season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online is your number one spot for all the sports action. Head over to the new updated desktop or mobile website and sign up today and receive a 50% bonus when you sign up today. That's right, 50% more money with the promo code LOCKED ON when you first sign up. L O C K E D O N. And it's not just football. Bet Online has pro and college hoops, NHL, boxing, UFC, and even your favorite Vegas casino games. So don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2021 season. Bet Online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports. Bet Online. They are stuffed with deals this Thanksgiving. So I, I mentioned a little bit of Stephen Matz's numbers at the top, and I want to kind of get into his pitch mix, if you will, uh, his repertoire, because uh, Cardinals are fans are most likely going to have to become very familiar with his pitch repertoire. Uh, four pitch pitcher, sinker, changeup, curveball, and slider. Uh, they, they stay pretty consistent in – Percentages, slider, he threw 4% more the time in 2021 than he did in 2020. And the slider yielded okay results. But what the, the difference maker for Steven Matz is that changeup. He only throws it about 23% of the time. Throws it primarily to right-handed hitters. But hitters overall hitting just 209 against it. Slugging just 341. Um, very solid. Weighted on base against it is 257. That's solid. Uh, the the put-away pitch for him is the curveball. Uh, 21% of the time, it becomes that put-away pitch uh, that the sinker is thrown 52% of the time. So you're going to see a, a heavy sinker baller. He he, he fits with the, the Cardinal mode. I, I think that the Cardinals are going to – you're, you're going to see a lot of – you're going to see and you're going to hear a lot of talk about sinkers in 2021 because the Cardinals have their fair share of sinker baller pitchers. So that, that that's kind of the, the Stephen Matz mix, if you will. It, it's, it's a pretty – you know, basic mix, for lack of a better phrase, uh, but it got results in 2021. And all the numbers in 2021 are massive improvements. Because when you look at baseball savant and you look at the, the stat cast statistics, it's a lot of blue in 2020, which means the bottom of the league, um, not good. You don't want to be in blue. You want to see a lot of red. And while you don't see a lot of red in 2021, you see massive improvements. It's expected ERA, for example, in 2020 was 6.87. It was 4.09 in 2021. His walk per, or excuse me, his hard hit percentage is 49%, dropped to 37%. His, his slugging against his pitching dropped from 571 to three, excuse me, uh, yes, 571 to 396. When you look at his percentile rankings, he's top 58th percentile in hard hit percentage, 72nd percentile in average exit velocity, 72nd in walk percentage, meaning he throws strikes, uh, barrel percentage at 61%. So again, I'm not trying to sell him as this ace, as this savior, as somebody who is going to shut everybody down. I'm trying to tell you that he is a solid starting pitcher and will do solid things for the St. Louis Cardinals. So got some responses I want to share from the Instagram story at LO underscore Cardinals. Uh, Club underscore Hagen says, W, if we get Stroman or Scherzer still, I agree with that I, to, to, a, to a point. I think that the offseason in general is a W if the Cardinals can get either another pitcher or just a free agent in general. Uh, Drew Dot Chambers says deal is a little long in my opinion, but still good, especially if Mo doesn't stop here. That's a caveat. That that's the asterisk that we're seeing all over the place. That that a lot of people have been talking about. 
Mo cannot stop here with this move. Uh, Adams underscore Matt 22 said, not bad. There was better, but only 11 mil still gives us plenty of money to spend. Oh, and Dreyer also liked the AAV four years said it felt, felt like it was a little much. So opinions that I think a lot of us are sharing here, it, the average annual value clearly gives the Cardinals more room to, to spend and the, Cardinals need to spend that money for this offseason to be a win. And the uh, the contract length is a tad long. Owen Dreyer says, good move, as long as it isn't the last move. Continuing with the theme. And I Grandall says, if it's the only move L, if they keep adding, it's a small W. Totally understand that. And I uh, and I understand where, where, where they're coming from there. Uh, so thank you, for you guys for sharing your responses on Instagram and Twitter and YouTube and everything else of that nature. So I just wanted to share those today. So uh, Stephen Matz. The, the initial reaction, a positive one. It, the, the numbers bode well for him in 2021. I think that they will continue to bode well for him in 2022. He's got a better defense behind him. The ground ball percentage is a big positive, especially when you have gold all over the infield for the St. Louis Cardinals. In my opinion, a positive move. Let me know in the YouTube comment section what you think. Be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel as we talk more about Stephen Mads and we talk about the Hall of Fame over the next couple of days with Jeff Carr, uh, bringing him in for that conversation. I uh, hope you guys have a lovely Thanksgiving day tomorrow with your friends and family. Safe travels today. Have a good time tonight. Uh, until I talk to you guys tomorrow, and again, it'll be part one of a crossover between Jeff Carr and myself talking about the Hall of Fame, Scott Rowan, and other items as well. Uh, be sure to tune back in for that. But until I talk to you then, uh, be sure to stay safe, stay well, and have a fantastic rest of your day.